and I think I'm here. I have to look around to make sure, but I think I'm glad to be here. Uh, let's all sing together. Blessed be the name. And some of you are standing. Let's all stand together while we. Number 32. 32. All praise to him who reigns above in majesty supreme, who gave his son for men to die that he might man redeem. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. His name above all names shall stand, exalted more and more. At God the Father's own right hand, where angel hosts adore. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If we can, let's do number three. Verse number three, please. Redeemer. Redeemer, Savior, friend of man, what's written by the fall? Thou hast devised the nation's plan, for thou hast died for all. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Man, that's good singing and playing of the instruments. As you're being seated, wave to everybody and say hallelujah. hallelujah. All right, I heard a couple of hallelujahs. That's good. Hallelujah, yes, blessed be his name. Welcome to the First Baptist Church of Gibsonton, Florida. Those in the sanctuary, and I know there's... Uh, maybe a thousand or so, a whole bunch of folks on the other side of the camera watching, and you're welcome tonight too. We're glad you're here with us as we not only worship, but we praise his holy name. And I heard a whole 30-minute sermon about that recently, about what the difference was between worship and praise. And what I got out of it was, this guy was talking, and what I got out of it was, Worship is when I personally worship Jesus, and I can do it standing in a crowd or I can do it standing alone, but in my heart, uh, I commune with him. We speak to each other, but praise is like we're singing now, and we raise our hand and say, thank you, Jesus, and hallelujah, and all that stuff. So it ta it's not the same thing. Worship and praise, they're different, but it takes both of them, and I'm so glad you're doing both of them tonight. Announcements. Pastoral staff, do we have announcements? Yes. Sister Donna, that leaves me out. <laughs> but I know there's some here that can do that, and please help, yes, with that. I told, uh, I guess it was Dwight and some of them I was talking to before church, that crazy plastic plant on my front porch even wilted. It's been so hot outside. So <laughs> I don't do well with flowers or plants. Uh, announcements that I do know of would be our regular services Sunday morning. Bible study hour at 9.30, several different age groups meeting in different places, so you keep up with that. 
and then 10.30 service in here, 5 o'clock choir rehearsal. I should be able to remember that. And then uh, 6 o'clock uh, evening service. And then again next Wednesday already. We can plan ahead for that. Next Wednesday Bible study hour at 6. And then Buddy has a dissertation to give us. Yes. Amen. Children's ministry, 11 o'clock Saturday. Then they'll branch out from here. Thank you folks for doing that. Really needed, yes. Okay, let's have a word of prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for drawing us together as you have. Thank you for loving us. And thank you for allowing us to come into this beautiful place that you've allowed to be and you've erected for us using men's hands in comfort and quietness of this moment we want to listen to you father and as this next song says just open our heart that we may see and hear you in jesus name amen you may remain seated but let's sing number 163 163 it talks about open my eyes that I may see. Let's sing the verse, first two verses, and then we'll do something a little different. Verses one and two, and I'll try not to get too slow. Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hand that wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my ears. That I may hear voices of truth out in the spear. And while the wave notes fall on my ear, everything walks will disappear. Silently now I wait for thee. Ready, my God, thy will. Yes, we can. I know a man who can. I can take a heart that's broken and make it over again. But I So 
Let's sing verse number three. Let's stand together. This will be our offertory verse. Maybe we'll have some prayer time, but Brother Buddy will lead us. Maybe we have some more special music following the prayer time. Open my mouth and let me bear gladly the loving us and ask that you would please bless this offering and those who give this evening as you multiply this in your economy, Lord, and send it around the world that we may share in the salvation of others. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated as we receive this offering. Get a microphone. Brother Buddy Burton's going to lead us in our prayer time. And then Brother David Howard has some special music. And then Pastor Clemens has some special Bible study. I wasn't quite ready. I was thinking of, of the kind of tissue Donna might need. We have some, we have Charmin. That'll be good. She asked Evie if she could do it. I said, if Evie can't, she'll learn how. <laughs> Hadn't seen anything much she couldn't do. Good to see all of you here tonight. How many of you are glad to be here? All but three. Well, I'm glad. <laughs> all right, let's remember, as we start every prayer service, our pastor and uh, Patty and Darla. And... Um, been wonderful to see how God is working and the things that Patty does and says. It's wonderful. Um, let me think a minute. I have a friend. <laughs> Do you remember the Neelands, the singers? Well, the guy there, his name is Jason Clark, a young man. Well, his daddy's Dan Clark, a great, great guy and a good singer. And he's been needing a uh, tr kidney transplant, and so people have been praying all over the country for him, and, and so as a good word of encouragement tonight, this lady uh, told him she wanted to do it, and, and, and she's a match, and that's going to happen. So that's wonderful. All right, who else wants to share something tonight for our prayer time? Here. Yes. Let me, um, I know we mentioned it Sunday morning, but I had a couple of my classmates, uh, Edwin Parker and uh, Maurice Brandon. Um, both of them know the Lord, and it's just good, to, uh, you know, after you get out of school a number of years, you find out that your classmates have come to Christ and been saved, and, and uh, but these are good, close friends of mine, and uh, still have a great relationship with them. They both need prayer. Uh, Maurice had a stroke. And Edwin's having some other difficulties, and he's battled some cancer in the past and some infections. So let's remember them in prayer tonight. 
So thank you so much. Continue to pray for Susan Rogers. Um, uh, I wanted to uh, make an announcement on the lady that uh, my son works for. They told her they thought that she had pancreatic cancer. Well, she has swollen lymph nodes, so she does not have pancreatic cancer. That's a miracle. Thank God. Yes, sir. I, I have a praise report. My darling wife and I took a 1800 mile road trip to go see the ARC experience and not one speeding ticket, not a flat tire. It was a miracle. <laughs> Dave over here. I have a dear friend that I've all asked you all to pray for in the past. Um, her name's Angela and she's really special to me. She was in my youth group many, many years ago and She's had some physical struggles that are really beyond comprehension. She has a couple of diseases that are autoimmune-type diseases. One's called ankylosing spondylosis, which affects the back, and it causes the back to fuse, and it's just horrendous. And she's in pain constantly in ways that, that are just indescribable to those of us that don't experience it. And she recently found out that she has another one. And, and yet she's rejoicing in all this. But she also has something called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Have any of you ever heard of that? It's, it's where the, the joints, the ligaments, and tendons become really hyperflexible. Um, Sandy and I go to a, a chiropractor, and, and the young lady who, who uh, gives us a massage after the actual cracking uh, her, her baby daughter was born with it, and so she just is this twistoflex baby. But anyway, this, this woman that I know that was in my youth group, she's 45 years old, she's, she's got it now too. And what it causes is when she stands up real quickly, her blood pools down in her legs, and her veins just expand out because they're like really soft, and she passes out. And so I'm asking you all, if you would, please pray for my friend Anne. She is just a very noble Christian believer. She takes in children and teenagers. She's never been able to have children of her own, but she loves all of them and does a, just an amazing job. Uh, she's adopted several. She fosters. She does all kinds of great work, and she spreads the gospel. Her husband is a sound man, professional sound man for a church a mega church, and they're just doing the very best they can to serve the Lord. So please pray for my friend Angela as she struggles through this, okay? Thank you. Someone else? Yes, yes, yes sir. Well, a lot, of, a lot of you folks don't know who I am. My family, I come and we sit up in the, uh, the balcony. Uh, came last week for Wednesday service. Oh, sorry, sir. I think I can talk with all this thing, you know? <laughs> but we came last, I came last week for Wednesday service, and we're back again tonight. But I have a couple of prayer, I mean prayer requests, and maybe a praise as well. Uh, brother, I understand the back thing you talk about. Uh, I'm a young man, and I had a major back surgery last year. Uh, I was immobilized for almost three months. My lovely wife mm -hmm. had to do everything for me, so I can understand your, the, the problem of the sister, and I will continue to pray for her as well. But speaking of that, so I've been having a lot of mobility issues um, went back two days ago to see my surgeon, and it kind of fused my, my spine again, my lower back. So just keep praying for me that I continue to get well. Uh, I've been, I'm feeling good today. And yesterday, I'm feeling really good. I, I'm hoping the medication lasts a little bit longer <laughs> so I can keep walking and keep coming back to church. But Amen. then my, my youngest daughter who comes as well and talk to pastor, she wants to sing a song. She plays the piano. She's looking forward to that once we figure out how to do the MP3 player thing. But... Uh, but she's not feeling well, so if you can pray for Ariana, we don't know what's going on. We're going to take her to the hospital tomorrow to get her swab. We hope it's not COVID, uh, but she's having aches in all her in, in all body, so we'll take her to get her swab tomorrow. Uh, and then another thing about me, um, I'm going through some transition. I got a major job interview tomorrow. Um, you guys don't know, I've, I've been military for almost 27 years. I uh, never had to do a job interview in 27 years. <laughs> I'm going to do my first job interview tomorrow, and I'm very nervous about it. Um, so please pray for me that everything goes well. 
And but above all, I just want God to be able to be here. Amen. That's it. We've never seen a country go down in the last four and a half months like America. Everything's gone wrong. Who would have dreamed that the administration would turn on Israel? And they don't, they don't recognize the fact that God will curse people who do that to Israel. So we're in very serious condition in this nation. Sad. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, if you could... Um Keep my nephew Andrew in prayer. He's a man in his mid 30s. He's a Christian daddy of five little girls, all under the age of five. But he's experiencing some serious side effects from having COVID um, that are affecting his heart, and he's lethargic, and some days he can't even get out of bed. So we just lift him up in prayer, please. I appreciate that. Thank you. We'll do it. Someone else tonight? Any more praise reports? Donna's coming again. Want more tissue? <laughs> no, I don't. But this, this is serious. Uh, I have most of the teachers at Strawberry Ridge or my family, and a man was arrested today, and he, was, he had been raised at the strawberry farm across from my family. And to know what he did and to be arrested. The teachers are heartbroken at Strawberry Ridge. And just pray for all of them and for his family. It's just a desperate situation for them. Aren't we glad that there's nothing too hard and too big for God? Amen. It's a powerful thing when God's people join together. There. One of the three musketeers back there. Um, I just had one. Uh, one of my coworkers just found out that she has breast cancer. So that's it. Bless her heart. Kelly. Okay. Remember that. Anyone else? Unspoken request tonight. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this time together that we set apart for these petitions that we, you've heard tonight. You know the situation on every person who's been named that needs prayer. You created them. You know their bodies, and you know what their needs are. So we just together ask you to touch those lives whatever the needs are. I help our brother here as he interviews for a job tomorrow and meet that need. And we just worship you and praise your name, Lord. You're so good. You do far more than you should for us. We just thank you for your blessings. I ask you for your anointing on our pastor as he comes to lead us tonight. And we'll give you praise and glory for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Dr. David Howard.
Thank you, David. Good job. Thank you so very much. Thank all of you for coming, and thank you for being here tonight. It's good to get together, pray one for another. And um, everyone in here, you know, whether we share them uh, verbally or not, we all carry some burdens. We all know those who are in need. But tonight, no matter what our problems may be, no matter what we face in life and what we are facing, there's one thing that we can still do as Christians. We can still rejoice in the Lord. And that's kind of where I want to remind us tonight. Yeah, we're, I think we're living in the end time. I really do. I think the Lord is setting the stage for the rapture. I really believe that. And um, I think the Lord is setting the stage for a one world government. I believe that. And um, so anyway, there's a lot of things going on. And, but you know what? We can still rejoice. We can still rejoice in the Lord, no matter our pains, our sickness, our sorrow, uh, the troubles that are around us or wherever. And we still, as Christians, we have a hope. We have within us something the world does not have. We have a living Savior who lives and abides within us. And we rejoice even in the Lord in the time of sickness and the time of sorrow we can still rejoice in the Lord. In the book of, of uh, Psalms, chapter 5, and verse number 11, just to kind of by way of introduction tonight, we got that up. Let them, let all of those that put their trust in thee rejoice. That's all of us. All of us who put our trust, just rejoice. We see the problems. We know they're there, but we know the Lord is in control. Look at Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 4. Rejoice in the Lord. How often? Always rejoice in the Lord. Now, we find that difficult sometimes, don't we? We really do. But yet we're uh, commanded and exhorted by the Word of God that God is almighty, God is all-powerful, God is in control. So therefore, as Christians, because He is in control, because He is God and He is almighty, we can rejoice always, could I just say, in all things. We can rejoice in the Lord. So tonight I wanted to give you about four good reasons out of the book of Ephesians, chapter number one, beginning with verse number six, as to why we can rejoice in the Lord always. So if you look in the beginning of verse number six, to the praises of the glory of his grace, first of all, you think about the grace of God. I'll tell you what now, I don't know about you guys, but I don't deserve it. I really don't. I've been so blessed in life. Uh, I don't deserve the good life that I have lived. If God takes me home tomorrow, you know, God has been merciful to me. And the grace of God, the Bible says, for uh, by grace are we saved. And uh, none of us deserve salvation. You know, if we got what we deserved tonight, I know where every one of us would be. We'd be shaking hands in hell. You know what I mean? But thank God for the grace of God that uh, unmerited favor of the Lord is not by works of righteousness, which we've done because he did all the works of righteousness for us on the cross. Amen. And so there's nothing left for us to do. All we have to do is put our faith and trust and accept him as our Lord and our Savior. So I praise the Lord tonight, and I rejoice in the Lord because of the grace of of God. He has given to us his righteousness. And uh, look in John chapter 1 in verse number 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm glad I'm living under grace and not law. No one could keep the law. No one kept the law except Jesus Christ. All else failed, all others failed. But aren't you glad that grace and truth came? If we were still living on the, under the law, and the law was our judge, let's put it that way, if the law was our judge tonight, we'd be condemned because the law condemns us. But the grace of God rescues us from our condemnation. And so thank God tonight, no matter what goes on in life, I can rejoice 
because God gave me something I didn't deserve. Have you ever been given something you didn't deserve? We all have, haven't we? Some people come and do some favors for you, and you know you're so grateful, so thankful, and you don't deserve it, but they did it anyway. Boy, God did us the greatest favor. We did not deserve it, but through his grace, he came. Look at Romans 3, 24. Romans chapter 3, verse 24, being justified freely. I love that word free, don't you? When I see something free, I really double read it. You know what I mean? I, I, yeah. But it, And salvation is free. Why would anybody, you know, if I told him, I don't care who it is, probably the richest man in the world. I said, I got $100. You're going to lay it on the table. It's free if you want it. A millionaire would pick it up. And here, the grace of God, salvation, the most wonderful gift that man could ever have is free, and they won't pick it up. Think about that. So we can just rejoice tonight as Christians because of the grace of God. Secondly, we find in verse number 7 of Ephesians chapter 1 that uh, we can rejoice because of redemption. Redemption through the blood, forgiveness. And we talk about grace. In whom we have redemption through his blood. We sing that song. What can wash away my sin? Nothing. There's just nothing else can do it but the blood of Jesus. What can make us whole again? Nothing. Just nothing else. You can't find anything else that will satisfy God except the blood of Jesus. And so we find that redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin, according to the riches. We come back to that word grace again. But we're, we're rejoicing tonight as Christians, no matter what we're going through in life, because of the grace of God and because of redemption. Look in Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 9. Not having our own righteousness, being found in him. If you, listen, that's where you want to be found. The Bible talks about us being lost in sin, but if we can be found in him. Isn't that a wonderful thought? Being found in him, not having our own righteousness. Think about this with me tonight. I, I really, when I read that verse, my mind wanted to go a lot more with it. We are here tonight as Christians, not in our own righteousness. I have the same and you have the same righteousness of Jesus Christ. He gave that to us freely. He gave us his righteousness. Found it not having our own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. So we, I have, and you have tonight as a Christian, we have the righteousness of God upon us. We're righteous because we have his righteousness. It's not my righteousness. It's not your righteousness. We evidence every day we demonstrate it's not our righteousness by things that we do and say and think. But aren't you glad we have his righteousness and not our righteousness? And so we can rejoice tonight because of redemption. We have the righteousness of the Lord Jesus applied to our heart, applied to our life, our soul, it's depending upon not my righteousness, but his righteousness. And that's so wonderful. That, you know, you could tie that into eternal security. It just goes everywhere. You, you can't pollute the righteousness of God. Now, you can pollute man's righteousness, goodness, but God's righteousness is not pollutable. <laughs> is, that a, is, that a, is that a word? I mean... The world cannot pollute the righteousness of God. Maybe that's a better way to put it. And to think tonight that I have within me and you have within you tonight because of salvation and redemption, I possess his righteousness. That ought to make you want to shout. Because you looked in the mirror this morning and you saw something that, you know, wasn't very pretty. And I'm not talking about your face. 
I'm talking about your life. We all have a life that's not very pretty from time to time. Amen? Amen. And, uh, but to know that my salvation does not rest upon my goodness, but it rests upon the righteousness of God who lives and dwells within me and within you tonight. That's salvation. Brother, that's enough to rejoice about. That gives me a eternal righteousness, not just earthly righteousness, but eternal righteousness that, man, I can rejoice no matter what's going on because whatever happens here is temporary. Whatever the suffering I go through here, whatever trial we go through here, heartache we go through here, this is only temporary. Why? Because we have his righteousness. Now, the unsaved, their suffering does not end. Their trials do not end. But for the child of God, our suffering, our trials, our heartaches end when we leave this world and go to heaven. And so we can rejoice tonight knowing all that we have that we're going through is temporary. Brother, it's just temporary. All of our trials are temporary trials. Only the lost will experience eternal trials eternal misery, but because we possess his righteousness, not our righteousness, but his righteousness, now we have freedom. Now we have everlasting life, and we know that heaven is our home. Look at Romans 4, chapter 6. Did I have that already? Even as David also described the blessedness of man unto whom God imputed righteousness. How? Without works. I'm glad I don't have to work for my salvation. I'm glad this buddy would never make it. <laughs> don't put that on camera. Aren't you glad that it's free? Aren't you glad? We, you can work. Listen, you could be a monk living somewhere praying 16, 18 hours a day, studying the Word of God, 18 hours a day, and die and go to hell. If you don't have the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Without works, none of us, for by grace, are we saved through faith. That not of ourselves. Aren't you glad it's just a gift? Just a wonderful gift. A free gift. You can't buy it. You can't purchase it on your own. It's just there for you if you want it freely. And if you try to earn it, you never get it because you've got to accept it freely from the Lord. So we move on. We find now that, too, we rejoice because of the grace of God. We rejoice because of redemption that we have and his righteousness that we have. And then number three, in verse number eight, uh, we can rejoice because of the wisdom that God gives to us. Look at verse number 8. Wherein he hath abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Here we find in these short few verses so many wonderful things that we have and reasons to rejoice tonight as Christians, even though we're living in a dirty, nasty world that's filthy and sinful. Here we come tonight to church. And we leave the world out there. We come in here and we, you know what we're, I say this carefully, but we come to church to try to pretend we're in heaven for an hour. We want to leave the world outside. We come in here. We leave our cares outside. Leave our problems outside. And we come in here to this little place and Churches all over the world are doing this tonight. And uh, we come in here and we kind of pretend like we're already in heaven. Ain't that good? And, uh, and, so, and then one day the real heaven will come. Boy, we'll be with all of God's people. What a day of rejoicing that will be. But he has made available wisdom. Wisdom. Any man like wisdom, let him ask of the Lord. With salvation comes the the 
benefits of wisdom. And uh, so if you need some wisdom, we all need it. Uh, we're all dumb in most areas of life, <laughs> but God's Word is our wisdom. God's Word gives us a guide that we need, and, and so uh, we can have wisdom wherein He has abound or because we have His righteousness, we, have his, uh, we can have His wisdom and from God and in all things, but of Him are ye, look in 1 Corinthians 1.30, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom. God has provided wisdom to us and righteousness. And, well, look at that. You got wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. What else do you want? Well, could I say that? What else do you need? When you get saved, you get all of that. When you let Jesus come into our heart, I got wisdom, I got righteousness, I got sanctification. The word sanctification means just means to be set apart. We're set apart from the world. We're set apart unto the children of God and redemption. So we can just, listen, that's enough right there to make me just want to rejoice. No wonder we come to sing. You know, we don't sing in the minor key. We rejoice, we sing in, what would be the other key, brother buddy? Huh? The major key. And, uh, boy, we rejoice. We don't moan and groan around here about how bad it is. We come and say, great is the Lord, greatly to be praised. Amen. And we rejoice. And even though we, we got some heartaches, we got some trouble, we just sing like we don't. <laughs> we come to church and pretend like everything's okay. And it is okay because we have Jesus Amen. in our heart and in our life. Well, let's go on to the last one tonight, and this is this. Listen, we can rejoice tonight like the world cannot rejoice. We can rejoice tonight because we know the mysteries concerning the future. Look in verse number 9. Verse number 9 of Ephesians, there you go, having made known unto us. I mean, this is all within about three or four verses of Ephesians. He's made known unto us. Who's us? That's the Christian. That's the body of Christ. That's the true church. He said, I've made known unto us, Paul writes, the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself. Now, so from the word of God, Christians tonight, and I mentioned this earlier, we understand what's going on. We may not approve of it, we may not like it, but ultimately we know, we understand. The world does not understand what God is doing. It's a mystery, but the world, God is preparing his bride for presentation to his son, the bridegroom. And one day the bridegroom is going to come down the aisles of heaven and get his wife, his bride. And uh, see, the, the world don't understand that. The world doesn't understand the fact that we understand that there's going to be a one world government. The world doesn't understand the fact that we understand that in the last days evil seducers shall wax worse and worse. The world just doesn't understand What's going on? We understand it. We don't like it, but we understand it because we under, it's in the Bible. Now, look at this. We rejoice because 1 Corinthians 5. No, let's go to. Which one do I want first, Dan? Well, let's go to 1 Corinthians 15, 51. I wrote it down first. I think I did. Behold, I show you a mystery. See, I can rejoice tonight. You can rejoice tonight because God has revealed to us, to the world, it's a mystery. That means they don't understand it. They don't see it. Um, they don't know what's going on. We know exactly what's going on. We know perfectly what's going on because the mystery has been revealed to us through the Word of God. Well, the world doesn't believe the Word of God. The world doesn't trust the Word of God. And so, therefore, they cannot figure it out, but... To them it's a mystery, but to us we know 
It's no longer a mystery because it's been revealed to us. Behold, I show you a mystery. He's going to show it to us. He's going to show his church, his bride. That's who we are. That's, the church and the bride are the same. And he's going to show to us things that are going to come to pass. And we can read in the book of Revelation things that are going to come to pass. And I tell you what, that, that ought to make you happy and rejoice. That ought to make you know in a time of trouble we can shout anyway. And so, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all hope we're going to be changed. And so Paul knows there's going to be some alive at the coming of the Lord, and there's going to be many that have died and uh, asleep, but they're going to be woke up. <laughs> now look at this verse. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And we're going to look at verses 9 and 10 and 11 and 12. And we're going to bring this to a close. But as it is written, eyes have not seen. We're talking about a mystery. We can rejoice tonight because God has revealed to us the future. The future is a mystery to the world. But to the child of God, we already know the mystery. We know how it's going to end. We know how it's going to work out. As it's written, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared. Only the shade which God has prepared to them that love him. Look at verse 10. Let this sink in. I know you've read it before, but let it, let it just refresh. But God has revealed them unto us, the mystery. We are, you know, we're so special. We may not have the, you know, a degree for Harvard or Yale, but we know things they don't know. In some ways, we're smarter than they are. I mean, I don't know if my IQ hits 100 or not. That's average. My teachers told me in school I was below average. <laughs> but I've excelled above most of them. <laughs> Praise God, hallelujah. Amen. By the grace of God. Amen. But anyway, God has revealed all this to us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep. Let that word sink in. That phrase, the deep things of God. God has revealed the deep things to us. I mean, I can rejoice tonight because God has let me know the deep thinking of what he's going to do, the deep things of the Lord, the way he thinks and what he has planned. Now look on verse number 11. For what man knoweth the things of man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. If the Spirit of God is in us, then we know these things. If we only have the Spirit of man within us, then we don't know the things of God. But aren't you glad you're saved tonight? Aren't you glad you're indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God tonight? Aren't you glad tonight that God has shared these mysteries of the future? As far as the world is concerned, it's a mystery. But to you and I, We've seen it. We know it. It's not a mystery to us. Now let's go on. Verse number 12. And I think that's my last one. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things. I like that. We might know. We're not kept in ignorance. We're not kept in some blind, not knowing what's going to happen. God has revealed the future to us. And thank God we don't have to be fortune tellers. We just had to read the book. But the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us by God. Freely given to us. It doesn't cost you a dime to read this book. God has given to us the Holy Spirit. It didn't cost me anything to have the Holy Spirit come and live in my heart and life, in my home. 
all I had to do, it was free. And when the Holy Spirit, all of this stuff that we talked about tonight was made available to us. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. You know, folks, I know sometimes we go through trials, but, and we all do, but we got so much to be happy, thankful for. We've got so much to rejoice about. And so I know we pray for one another, we lift each other up, and we need that. And God knows we're living in a foreign land. We know that. But thank God we can rejoice because we know this is just temporary. This is not our permanent dwelling place. Somebody say amen. amen. This is not my permanent home. This is not where I'm going to live forever. This is just a few years here. And so, you know, if we can stand anything for a little while. But heaven is forever and ever and ever. There's no more sin, no more heartache, no more, you know. And so we've got a lot to rejoice about tonight. So no matter what we're going through, no matter what tomorrow may throw at us, just don't forget, we've got a lot to rejoice about. We can rejoice in the Lord always. And as he said, and again I say, rejoice. Let's stand together. Hopefully the positive message tonight will give us the strength that we need, the blessings of God upon our life just to continue to live as long as God permits us to live on this earth. We can do it with a rejoicing spirit that the world can see that there's hope within us because we have a rejoicing, happy spirit. Father, tonight, thank you for, Lord, these wonderful gifts that you've given to us that comes to us through the gift of salvation, that opened the doors to so many other wonderful attributes of God living within our life, strengthening us, helping us, encouraging us. And Lord, we just pray one for another, Lord, that we'll remain strong, knowing that soon we will one day be all together with you. Thank you for revealing to us the future that we can know even the future. Not as the world knows it, but Lord, know it through you, through your word, and to know that things are going to work out exactly like you said. So help us tonight. Encourage us and bless us as we live through this life in this world. In Jesus' name, amen. Brother Mel. 175, 175. Standing on the promises. That's where we're standing. Standing on, on the, the promises, promises of Christ my King. Through eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Everybody sing. Standing. Standing. Standing on the promises of God my Savior. Standing on the promises of God. Is there a last verse? Standing on the promises that cannot fail. Everybody. With the howling storms of doubt and fear us fail. By the living word of God I shall prevail. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God. Savior, standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. For all of you listening in tonight, thank you so much for listening in there in your homes or wherever you might be. And uh, we're praying for you and continue to pray for your church and uh, pray that God will continue to bless us until we can one day meet again, all of us in the air going to heaven. God bless you. Good night to all of you. Amen. Amen.